Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today we're working on a dream catcher. We're going to be using this ring, perhaps some of these beads, some cotton, and some t-shirt yarn. So let's get started. I'm starting pretty small with this Dreamcatcher project because I've never done one before and I just want to test out some of the techniques so that I can go on to do something bigger. I always like to start with something a little simpler before I um, get too elaborate. So we're going to separate this. We're not going to need this section. What we're going to do is wrap this in the t-shirt yarn so that it's white and then we're going to um, come in with this cream color yarn and we're going to do the insides. So because I don't know the length that I'm going to need, um, I've just come through the hoop a few times. I've left this side attached. This side I just have a bunch here that I'm going to be using come around. So I'm going to open it up as much as I can and overlap as I go. Just like so. As you come to a part where you've run out of yarn wound around, just come around again and wind it around like so. And then just open and wrap. And overlap as you go. And again, open Overlap and wrap. And as you come to the little hanger here, just come both sides of it. And then just overlap. And continue on. I think I'm going to back this off and fold this in so I have a neater edge. Because I don't necessarily want to see the raw edge right by where it hangs. So that's a little better. Hope you can see that. Just take some care with the center here. This t-shirt fabric is great because it's stretchy. So it does have some give. Now that I'm at the halfway point with wrapping, I'm just going to add a piece of green tape to mark that. And so now I know that if I unwind and double this length, and I'll add another piece of tape at the other end so I know where that is. So now when I unwind, I can measure my length and get a better indication of how much I'm going to need to wrap this loop here. So I'm just gonna quickly unwind now I'm going to measure between these two points and then double that length and then I'm going to cut my yarn properly so that I can complete the wrapping of this hoop. So I've cut my length at double my measurement. So now I've got that and now I can go ahead and I can put this back into the middle to save it for another project. I just don't like to waste it. 
And as I said, this is just um, a small project that I'm testing out for something bigger. Now I'm gonna bring the hoop back and this time we really are gonna wrap it. So I think this time though, I'm gonna start in the center. Just try to get it lying as flat as you can. You don't want it to be too lumpy. So again, I'm gonna go in and out a few times. So I've got my cord ready to go as I wrap. It's just more convenient than doing it one at a time. I'm leaving the right edge here wrapped under and I'm opening up the left edge so that when I overlap, I've got a nice sort of thin edge here and double edge here. So it's not gonna get too bulky. So again, pulling open the left side, leaving the right side wrapped, and then wrapping around, like so. Once you get to bigger projects, you're gonna find that there are times where you're gonna to have to break in the middle of it. So I save things like these orchid clips here. As you can see, they open and they make perfect little clamps for this round hoop. So if I wish, I can stop, take a break, come back, take the clamp off, and then continue on my way. So that's just a little tip. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finish wrapping and I'm gonna glue the joint here and then I'm gonna use my little clamp here um, to hold it as it dries. So I am gonna take a break because I don't have glue with me and I'll be back to glue it up. Once I'm back to the beginning, I'm just going to bring it around to the back. I'm gonna take some of this high tack glue. It's extra tacky. Going to apply it. So I can't get the glue to come out, so I've just taken a little finishing nail here. I'm just gonna spread it on. And then bring the fabric over. And then what I'm gonna do is, once that dries, I'm gonna weave it through here and cut it off. So as you can see, I have it clamped on the other side which is just holding it down and that'll dry nicely. That's already really tacky, so before it dries, I'm just going in, I've threaded a bodkin here. I'm just gonna weave this through. And I'll just bring the end through to the other side. There you go, so that's how it's looking. Now I'm gonna take a pair of scissors. And just pull that a little bit and cut it off. And now you can hide that edge like so. And there you go. And there it is from the front. So now we're ready to apply our thread. So let's bring this in. I'm just gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna double tie it. Actually, maybe I should triple tie this so that there's no chance of it coming undone. It would be a shame if all your work unraveled just because you didn't tie this properly. 
Okay, so that's done. Now we're just going to bring it through. And you want to make sure that you've got evenly spaced. Actually, before we do that, let's just tighten this up over the knot. Okay. Now we're going to bring it down through that loop. And we're going to set our spacing. So let's give that a try. And let's see what that is. Just out of curiosity, that's two inches. So let's continue on in two inch increments all the way around. So come down and through your loop. and then tighten at two inches. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. Okay, and through again. Come through your loop. and ensure you're about two inches away. So through, and then you're gonna come through your loop, and tighten. Okay, so I'm going to continue all the way around until I'm almost back to the beginning and then we're going to start our weaving. So now I'm almost back to the beginning, which is here. I've landed here, I've got a little bit of a gap and I'm just taking the time to unwind a bunch of thread. What I'm going to do is cut it off. Let's give these a try. These are just from an old broken necklace. So I've got a blunt darning needle here and I'm just threading it onto the end. And it makes quick work of getting these beads on. If you come across a bead that isn't wide open to get the needle through. Just set that aside. You can always re-drill it if you have to later. As I'm stringing the beads along to the other end, I'm putting this yarn onto a dowel. So I'm just going to wind it along until it's all wound onto this dowel, and then I can easily get it into my strings here. And once it's all wound on, we'll get going again. Okay, so my beads are on and my dowel is wound. I've got two kite tips on the ends here so that my yarn doesn't accidentally slip off. And Done my first one here. I've got the bead on. I'm gonna go to the second one. And I'm gonna come through.
and bring the beads with it. off a little bit. I'm going to move that into the center, like so. Then I'll continue on to the next one here, and it's a bit slow going. So many beads, but it'll get faster as you complete the dream catcher. Just going to expose more of that thread. Okay. So I'm going to come through. And then I'll bring the beads with me. move on to the next like so. As you string along, make sure that you're pulling slightly so that you have a little bit of tautness, but not too tight. And there you go. That's one round complete. So we're just going to continue on in this manner. And Come over to the next one. You're going to slide a bead over. You're going to come through. And you're on the left side of the bead here. And you're just going to pull it all the way through. and you're going to tighten against this bead. Come over to the next one, slide your bead over. You're going to enter to the left. And 
then you're going to pull to the right and tighten against this bead here. Move over to the next one, slide your bead, enter to the left of the one below it, Now keep the beads on the left and pull through. And then as you can see, you need to tighten up against this bead here. You're gonna pull back so it's tight. Come forward, slide your bead over and continue. Now that I'm done with the beads, I'm just going it along with the string. Just inserting and pulling through. first row after the beads is a little tricky to pull up. But the second row after should be a lot easier. And here we go, we're starting on the second row now, so Just continue weaving as before. And at this point, it gets a little difficult to push this through. So I think what I'm gonna do is unwind a bunch and I'm just gonna go it, uh, go it alone with the needle. To finish off the middle, I'm gonna come down through the center. And I'll tie it off on the back. I'll put a few knots in and then I'll glue it as I did before with the tacky glue. So put a dab of that in the center and let it dry. Then we can turn it over and we can continue with the bottom here. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I do have some extra beads. And I might just add some crystal. I've got some lace. So I've cut my first piece at 48 inches and I'm just going to attach it by looping it through, pulling it through like so. And there you go. Now I do have some beads also, I've got some leftovers. So to string these on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of wire. I've got some beading wire here. I'm just going to cut a little piece off. There go my beads. So I folded the wire in half. And then I can string my bead right through. Poke it through. And there you go. That's an easy way of doing it. To attach the crystals, I'm going to loop through. On one side through on the other side and make sure that the ends are even.
Then I'm going to come under. And through this loop. And tighten it up. Then on the other side, I'm going to come under. And through this loop. Now in the center here, I'm going to catch it through these two loops here. So I'll come through on this side. Try not to catch. And I'll do the same with the other side. I'll come through from the left. And through this second loop here. When you string the beads through the loops here, just make sure that they are over the crystals, not behind. I had it backwards when I did it the first time. So I'm just ensuring that they're in front. Now I'm going to do a knot. I'm going to go right over left and under. And then I'll do left over right and under. And then I'll just tighten that knot down. And then that'll hang. And I'll embellish with some more beads and a few other things.